Hey everybody, I'm Amanda Rueda and I am the Senior Product Manager with Product Planning and I want to walk you through GitLab OKRs um, for purposes of dog fooding. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, I've landed on the project README. The project that we're using for internal dog fooding is called GitLab-OKRs and it's under the GitLab-com um, subgroup. So this is a dedicated project that's been created for GitLab OKRs. All teams will be using the same project at this time. Um, I've landed on the README because there's a lot of really good information and good links here. So we have the links to the directions in the handbook, to the feedback issue, um, and some other things. I also want to point out that I am keeping this updated um, for the next 30 days. Feature availability. So if you're wondering, hey, is this feature supposed to be here or is it being worked on? Um, this is what's currently available with explanations and then what we're currently working on and coming next, along with current bug status. So if you identify a bug, you can come to the README, see if it's a known bug. And if not, then you can report it. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to go to the issues list. Um, OKRs was built on top of work items, which um, also is um, what we use for tasks. So you can currently find those in the issues list. To create a new objective, you're going to come to this blue button, select the drop down, and select new objective. From there, you're going to select that new objective button again, and that reveals the title. For purposes of this demo, I'm going to enter some live data. This is um, the product divisions OKR. So I'm just gonna do this OKR one here, world-class DevOps experience. So I'm going to add that title here. I can select um, confidential if it was confidential, in this case it's not. And now I'm gonna select create objective. When I do that, as long as my sort of my issues list is by create a date, that objective will be the first thing in the list. So now I can select this to enter additional metadata. Um, this is a product division OKR, so the assignee is going to be David DeSanto, so I will assign him. The labels are very important. Please always include the OKR label and then your at least your division label. So we have division labels and we just discovered that there's um, some repeat ones here. Make sure you're using the scoped version. I'm going to clean this up, but it's the blue scope version. Um, and in this case, I am entering this for product. So I'm going to pick product, but you would pick what um, is applicable to your use case. And then for product and engineering, we're going to, we can go ahead and add section, stage, and group labels so that folks can search at different levels of the organization to see the OKRs applicable to the view they want. If they want to see all of product or they want to see for a certain section or stage or group. I'm going to leave it here because um, David's, um, OKRs are applicable to all of product. Milestone is not the typical milestone that you think about when we're doing um, development in GitLab. This is just what is the time frame for this OKR? And the time frame for OKRs are quarters. So we're picking FY24 Q1. And then progress and health status, I'm gonna leave blank because I'm not doing an update. I'm just merely creating this for the first time. In description, you can go ahead and enter information um, for the reader to understand what this is about. Um, I also recommend adding um, a section for related issues and related OKRs because as you'll see, we only have a widget for children. So you can see the child parent relationships, but you can't see related relationships yet. So I recommend having a standard format that you put on all of your OKRs so that your readers get used to knowing where they, um, where they should look for these, um, these data points. Okay, we've got the metadata filled out. Now I'm gonna add the children. So for objectives, you can add child objectives and child key results. So David might want to break this down into more objectives. Um, and again, objectives are the goals that we're trying to reach. KRs are the measures to understand if we've met those goals. Um, in this case, I only have child KRs. I have, let's see, one through five here, KRs. So I'm just gonna add those as KRs. I'm gonna copy and paste because I have it already typed up here. When I select the add, I can pick um, under the objective menu or key results to add a new one or an existing. In this case, I'm going to add a new. Um, and I'm gonna paste the title here. Again, I can choose if this is confidential and then I can create that key result. There's a nice workflow saver here. So if you have a whole list of 
heirs or children to, to enter, you can just enter them all um, one after one and then go and do the metadata after because this title box stays here for you. Um, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna keep entering these until I'm done. Now I happen to actually have these already created from a different video. So I'm gonna show you now how to add an existing as well. So if I go to add and instead of adding new key result, I'm gonna say add existing. Now I'm in a search box and searching is currently by title. So I can start typing the title, right? So I have two options, Airflow Vision and I have this AI assisted code suggestions, right? So if I do that, I can select um, the existing one here. I'm gonna do another one. Um, so deliver these requirements, right? So here's deliver these requirements as work items. And then I could just add that key result and it already brings it in for me. So why might you need to add an existing um, KR? Well, let's say you were doing this project for somebody, you're doing the data entry and you lost your place and you added children um, for whatever reason. You can then use these three dots to remove that child from um, the OKR or from the objective rather. Then you navigate to the objective the parent. So I'm going to navigate to the parent. And then I'm going to put that, I'm going to reparent that child that was, um, that is supposed to be here. So this is the replace CLI. Okay. And I have a duplicate because I've, I've been making a lot of these videos. Okay. So now I've showed you how to add children and how to add, um, how to reparent a child how to remove a child. Now let's go ahead and enter the metadata. So I'm gonna select this and replace the CLI. This is um, Orit's, so I'm gonna assign it to Orit. The labels again, um, the, the standard labels are the minimum labels, please add division and OKR. This is division product. Now I could put Orit section here so that she can pick up all of her, um, all of the OKRs related to her. Here we go. And I could add stage for this particular work item, but I'm not sure what it is, so I'm gonna leave it. Notice that I'm in my key result. This is the child of this one. And I no longer have a milestone. Instead, I have dates. I have a start and a due date. Um, the reason being is because the objective is within a certain, a certain period, uh, OKR period, a quarter. And then within that quarter, I might want to stagger my KR. So I might want to say, okay, this is going to be the first one that I'm going to start today. And I'm going to end at the end of February, for example. And the next one I'm going to do beginning of February and March. Um, so you can have um, discrete start and end dates separate from each other for your KRs. For progress and health, I'm gonna leave that blank for the first check-in. And then for description, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did for the last one, where I'm just gonna create these placeholders so that the people who own these can actually fill this information in. And now if I come back to my parent, I can see that that replace CLI has all the metadata that I've entered. All right, wonderful. I wanna show you now how to search for the KRs that you care about. So let's say I'm David and I wanna see all of the KRs related to um, the division product. I can go ahead and do that and see these. Now, if I wanted to see, for example, those that have a health status that are not on track, I can also do that. In this case, it's showing all of them because we haven't had any check-ins and so um, there aren't any health statuses. So this is showing both null as well as the other values of need, attention, and at risk. Um, he could break this down even further. Maybe he wants to search by group, but say where um, anything is group ML ops, which is not on track, right? And so you can search for your OKRs um, based on labels, just like you can throughout GitLab um, for issues. Okay, so that's all I wanna show you today. Thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.